Hello, welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. Uh, this is the second video in a series uh, of how many I don't know yet, in which we are working on the beginner pattern that we just released yesterday with our Facebook um, page that I'll tell you about in a second. The pattern is called January Mittens, and I've made some progress on it since yesterday, just a little bit of progress. Um, but this pattern, again, is for beginners. I designed this specifically for people who are just starting out with rug hooking or maybe returning after a hiatus um, and wanting to start with something a little bit on the easier side. So if you are just tuning in, be sure that you watch yesterday's video, which is also here on the channel uh, first, because it describes the things that are in the kit. This is a kit that comes with this 10 inch square pattern. It's a tile pattern squared with all of the wool that you'll need to complete this and then some extra, of course. Um, every month, we're going to do a tile for every month. January mittens, of course, is the first. It actually goes like this, the two mittens hanging on the silver heart wire. Um, every month, I want to include an unusual or non-traditional material. And this month, it is this um, foil that is super cool. It's metallic. It almost looks like leather, and it's actually wool backed in the same color. Often, you see this kind of material. It's very supple and pliable, very easy to hook. I began hooking it and it's coming along really well. I'm going to do some close-ups later, but you can see all these bright parts. We've got the lilac, the fuchsia, the cobalt, um, even some copper, and this is the gunmetal color that I use for the hook. It is a little bit more rigid, rigid than the wool, as you would expect, but it's a lot more supple than I thought it would be, and it's been working beautifully. So we'll talk more about the materials a little bit later on. I just want to put this back on the frame and talk about what I've done so far. Um, and some changes and some modifications that might be interesting for you to do too. So I'm just putting this back on this little um, carpet strip frame. We talked about the frames yesterday. This is the one I'm using for this project, a small um, handmade frame that I bought off Etsy. Somebody made it that did a beautiful job with the carpet strips on it. I'm just going to quickly put this on here because it's very fast and I'd like for you to be able to see what my what I call my blind hand underneath is doing, the thing that you don't see that you automatically start doing as you become a better and more experienced rug hooker. So um, tune into the last video if you want to go over the materials that are in the kit. I spent a good part of the day putting together the kits for the people who have bought them already. This is only the day two of kits. It will be running all through January with this January mittens pattern, but it's filled with these bright colors and these metallic wool backed strips that are working great. I've cut everything in a number five and you're ready to go. I'm ready to go. So I've got my little envelope out and the only things in it are my magnifying glasses if you're having the same problems that I am. My hook, which is a medium sized hook, don't go with like an eight hook or a large hook because these are not primitive cut. They're not like number eight strips. These are five. So these are right in the middle and a little pair of glass, uh, glasses, a little pair of scissors if we need it. So something different that I've done with the pattern that I wasn't expecting to do. Two things have changed since yesterday when I did the last video. Uh, one of them is color. So if you have ordered the kit, you I did not send any kits out that are not um, complete with everything I'm showing you right now. I added some things to the kit because as I was doing this pattern, I felt that it was so full of cool colors, um, light blues, grays, turquoise blues, a little bit of fuchsia, um, and a little bit of bling in the border but I was feeling like it was an overdose of cool colors and there weren't enough warm colors. So I've added, if, you're, if you've ordered the kit, you are getting it with the addition of this color of sort of a tomato red. And I've added one more color of the metallic for the border in this copper. So those are the two really warm colors that I think are gonna pop this thing. This is as far as I got today with doing the kits and all, but I finished one of the mittens and I've got the gunmetal going up here to the heart, the wire, and I've started the border. So if you can see in this design, I've done some fooling around. If you're a beginner and you just wanna do vertical or horizontal in the background, do what is in your comfort zone, do what you feel like doing, do what you think is visually right for you. Um, I was getting a little bit bored with, with just lines, so I started putting swirls into the background. Um, which I thought was fitting because you'll find that in your background kit, um, you have got three or four different colors in here that are for the background. They're all different shades of gray and light blue that blend really well together. But at the same time, there's, there's three different prints and tones in there and you can play with them if you want to. 
So I started doing these swirling uh, motions. There's one down here. There's a swirl in here, like a curly cue. And I put one here wrapping around the gun metal, uh, just for interest. It reminded me of wind or of a snowstorm. Um, and I thought that was something fun to do. So if you want to do something like this in your background, um, I guess it's making it a little bit more complicated. Not much, it's just adding some curves. Um, but the way that I would do it, I, I just did it by hand and by eye. I just hooked it that way. But if you want to add things to your background, because it is a nice blank background other than the heart hook, um, you can actually pen it in freehand. And if you're going to do that, I'm going to do another one right now, and I'm actually going to pen it to show you. If you want to add things to your pattern, like you don't like the stripes in the border, you want more curly cues, more wind gusts, I'm going to do another one right here on my pattern. So I'm not going to get near my wool, but I've got a black Sharpie. And when you are using, when you are adding to your pattern, you have got to use a black or blue Sharpie because any other color Sharpie will bleed. Don't use green, don't use red, don't use purple, don't use any of the cool colors that they now put out in sets. I would just go with black. I wouldn't even play with blue. I would just go with black because it will never bleed. So get a black Sharpie. Any kind of tip is fine. This is a fine tip. And you can literally just write on your pattern and add a curly cue. If you want to do stuff in the background, if you want to do wind, if you want to do checks, if you want to do patterns, if you want to do stripes, and you want to add to the pattern that I've made you, get a black Sharpie and just add the things that you would like to add, knowing that you have a lot of colors in your kit to play with uh, and a lot of variety and changes in tone that could really pop if you want to do patterns within the pattern. It's an optional thing. It's just a thought. Um, one of the things I want to show you that's different today, too, is the border. Because when I drew this very plain border for a beginner, right, just straight lines down, um, I thought, well, we can do it all one color. We can do each row a different color. Or this could be like your playground on this piece, right? Um, this, is, this is pretty finite, this stripe, because I've given you the uh, modeled purple and then the fuchsia sides for the stripe on the turquoise mitten but these edges the border edges you have lots and lots of colors in your kit so this is your playground if you want to do what I've done here what I what I've done and I'm I surprised myself by doing it because I hadn't planned it I did some straight stripes you can see this cream colored stripe is going up but then there are times when I've gone like the blue metallic to the lilac to the um, fuchsia and then I did a little bit of the tomato red on top and here I've done the copper and then right to the wool so I'm blending in the border the metallics and um, the straight wools the different kinds of wools the nice thin uh, soft door mill and then the, the tweeds I added two more brown tweeds to your pack so instead of having one brown tweed you now have three one of them is much darker than the other one and again, you don't have to use all of them because I put extra in there so you could play. But I have broken up every row by doing uneven, unplanned, just spontaneous um, striping in different colors to try to put it together in an unusual way. I'm trying not to be too patterny. Um, I'm trying to make it look a little bit spontaneous and exciting with like the wind in the background and the multicolored uh, border. So that's another aspect of this pattern that you could change to really make your own. I'm going to show you a little bit of this closer. Uh, maybe I can actually do it right here. You know what? I'm going to put this on pause and I'm going to show you uh, one more technique that I think is important at the very beginning. And that is the beginning and the ending of your um, wool. So we did, we did a little bit of hooking yesterday and we'll do a little hooking again. And I'll do a moment of hooking just to show you what I mean. But we're going to do a close-up of this, too. So I'm just going to get ready to continue here with my gray. And I'm going to put you on pause um, to show you exactly what I'm doing, what the transition is between ending one row and starting the next piece of wool in the same place. So pause. Okay, so I'm just going to show you, truly for beginners, um, when you're ending a row like this, you see I haven't trimmed my edges yet. This is the last row. Remember I said, always try to end with your tails up so you don't accidentally pull them through from underneath. I'm ending here. This is my tail sticking up from the last piece of wool. I'm starting the same piece of wool. And for me, my technique is to go into that same hole. That hole is not packed yet, 
because it's only got this one half sticking out and a loop of course is two halves. So I'm pulling the next tail in through the same hoop, right? And then I'm gonna go into the next space or one and a half spaces or two spaces, depending on your gauge. I'm working on burlap, your patterns are on linen. So I'm just looping forward here and you can see I've got my two tails sticking together there. At the end of all your work, you're just gonna snip level your tails and you see they really disappear. But the reason I'm showing this is because it makes a lot of sense to start and start and stop your wool of the same color or not in the same hole. It makes a lot of sense. It kind of blends easily together and you really don't see uh, any difference between that and the look of a hoop. So I think that's probably it for today. This is as far as I've got about half. The reason I wanted to do half today, I just wanted to check the pattern and check the amounts that I gave in the kits to be sure that there was more than enough to be able to play around with the border and do some different things in the background. So I finished about half of it, was able to gauge the kit perfectly and double check and triple check myself. But I'm gonna be working on this again and we will shoot at least one more video showing January mittens as it comes completely together. Um, but yeah, we're making pretty good progress. It's only been 24 hours and, and so far I'm this far. And for those of you who have gotten the kit, I hope you post some pictures and show me how far you've gotten. So that's it for now. Look out for our next video and have a great night.